friends, welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 93. I am Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and this is Friday, uh, September 22nd. And it's in the morning, which is not my usual time to video. Wow, the shadows are weird. Yeah, maybe they're always weird and I just don't notice it. Well, I'm sorry. Um, maybe I'll fix my studio lighting in 2024. Studio lighting, i.e. great room lighting. Anyway, floss tube means cross stitch and variety show means something else. So we'll discover later what that other thing is. So cross stitch first. Um, I spent a couple of evenings on Hannah Campbell 1838. This is the Hands Across the Sea recent release. And I'm doing it on um, 36 count ballet slippers, which is a fox and rabbit. Here's the, that's kind of the whole size of it. Fox and rabbit uh, linen, and I'm using Soie d'Arger and 103s for the over one, which at the moment there's only that little bird. But since I last showed it to you, I finished the big bird. I did a couple of the border motifs over here. Oh, although I realize there's no stem on this flower. And I started on the uh, central cartouche, I guess you would call it. So I worked over here. So I started on this thing, that those red dailies are that. Um, I'm showing you the back. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see that I'm really not that tidy a stitcher, but I think it'll look fine in the end. So I started those red dealies. Because, and I realize I have to get going on that, even though the border is a lot of fun and the other things are, because there is an ornate, um, fairly large over one alphabet in there that is gonna take some attention, some courage, some girding of the loins. So anyway, I really enjoy working on that. This table, well, more than the table, is kind of a mess. It isn't really. It isn't at all. It's really just my area here. Um, Sampler 193 by 2x2 two two Stitch Art. This is an Etsy designer from Ukraine back a couple years ago or whenever it was that Russia invaded Ukraine and things got tough over there. I went on to Etsy and found half a dozen uh, Ukrainian cross-stitch designers from whom I bought charts, many of which I have no intention of stitching. I just wanted to have a tangible impact on the lives of a few people. Anyway, here's how far I am. I've just passed the 50% mark and you can pretty clearly see that. Uh, obviously it's gonna be square. It is 16 count white Ada and I'm using DMC 777 as my red, very enjoyable stitch. Yeah, very enjoyable. I sp can you hear the helicopter or something outside? And maybe the laundry going? There's a lot going on here today, partly because I'm doing this video in the morning. But anyway, Winter Rose Manor. This is With Thy Needle and Thread. Uh, designer is Brenda Gervais, of course. Um, I finished the roof and the chimneys. So now, I'm sorry about that. Didn't realize that was gonna be so obviously creased. Um, so have I finished half of this sampler? Probably, because what remains is a giant bouquet of flowers that sits on the roof and some other motifs to the side and a red cardinal and the rest of the border. Now the border is not insignificant, especially this top border part. 
mean, it, it doesn't show up much, but it's pretty dense. But so this big flower thing, the red cardinal and random motifs in here. But I'm very pleased with that. In any other year, I would think to my, whoops, let's have it right side up. I would think perhaps I'll finish this this year, but I don't think that's realistic because of going to England next week, things like that. So, but anyway, very fun. It'll get finished in good, in due course. Um, this is Matilda. This is from the Letters from Europe. Um, red box by Hands Across the Sea that was, that uh, Nicola Parkman released in February in honor of her birthday. And I didn't buy it when it was offered. For one thing, it sold out so fast. But also, I didn't think I was gonna buy it. But then I, I learned through a friend and some, a chain of mutual acquaintances that somebody had gotten it and decided it wasn't really for them and wanted to sell it. And so I bought it then, about a second, so sort of second pass. Anyway, Matilda, let me show you the thing and then I'll tell you the story. So this is the, there were seven samplers or eight samplers in the box. And this is the first one I worked on and I was attracted to it because I like the alphabets and I like the fact that it has blue in it. So a number of the samplers are just red. Again, I love red. And so this time I did this border thing, which, you know, that's kind of odd, isn't it? Is it eyeballs upside down? twirling eyeballs, and then the, I started this one. Um, now there isn't a lot of historical information known about this particular girl, Matilda, I say girl. I mean, it does seem to be a marking sampler, so probably it was a girl. And in fact, there's no, um, no biography at all really about her. Is that true? That's true. And it doesn't even say um, who, I mean, when it was stitched and she doesn't have her, a date on it. But I would say, I'm gonna guess, it would be the late 19th century, just based on the fact that those border motifs, some of them are things I haven't seen. Not that I'm all that up on samplers, but I haven't seen in um, other things in more, in older samplers. And there's a lot of repetition in older samplers. A lot of the same border things show up in a lot of these same time period. Now last weekend was the third weekend of, Oct of September. Let's not jump into October quite yet. And on the third weekend of every month, Leslie and I stitch um, Christmas themed cross stitches and we have been working on the nativity scene by Stitchy Princess, again, an Etsy shop, and she's in the Ukraine. And I finished it. And so here it is, finished. So I did the, the final angel and all the stars up in the sky, and I finished or did, I can't remember whether I had anything done, of this central collection of animals, a cow and a donkey, and of course the manger and Jesus. This is just, I think it's very charming. I love the stylized look of all those um, people, the whole thing I really like. So what am I gonna do with it? Well, I'll press it. We'll start with that. And I'll probably just stretch it on a, a foam board and pin it and pull it out at Christmas time and then put it away. That's probably what I'll do. I probably won't frame it or anything else, but that's a finish. And so that is what I've been working on in terms of cross stitch. But of course my brain is thinking about going to England and it's also thinking about, well, let me step back to the third weekend of the month situation. I um, 
want to continue indefinitely devoting the third weekend of each month to Christmas themed cross stitches. By Christmas themed, I mean things that have to do with Christmas, you know, Santa Claus, manger scenes, um, Christmas holly designs, whatever. Uh, specifically Christmas themed, not Christmas presents. Christmas presents is also a worthy cross stitching activity, but that isn't what I imagine the third weekend of the month to be for. And coming in with Christmas is also the idea of winter. And I'm, I'll tell you, I, so from a philosophical standpoint, as I've said before, there, I feel like I have a sweet spot in the number of projects that I have going. And that is around six projects plus my weekend, my two special weekends, the Blackbird weekend, which is the first weekend of every month and the Christmas themed. Nativity Sal um, weekend. And then other than that, six other projects. I have two full coverage projects right now and I think four-ish not uh, sampler type pieces. But I also have this idea that if I have already selected the fabric and if I have all the threads for something, and I've collected it. It's some special collection. It's kitted up, as they say, as we say in the biz. Then it's practically started. It's, you know, it's taking up mental space. It's taking up some physical space in a project bag or in a zipper pouch or something. And so to start stitching it is not to change its status very much. And so with that in mind, I'm thinking of, of starting this. Now, this is, I think it's been released. This was a Christmas present, if you will, in the December 25th um, envelope in the, um, the, the holiday countdown stitch along by Modern Folk Embroidery and Evertote last year. And I just think it's beautiful. And it's not large. It's not overly large. Um, beautiful borders, beautiful flowers. I just like it. I like the colors that are shown in this. And the idea that um, this is designed with is that the threads that are left over from the countdown stitch along, of which I have them in here, can be used to stitch this and possibly there'll be enough thread, but there might not be, and if not, you'll have to make a substitution, which is very much in keeping with um, how samplers were made in the in olden days, in the olden days. So uh, what I did is I went through my fabric pieces and I came up with this piece of 40 count um, flax colored Newcastle, 40 count, by Swigart. It's a piece that's pretty much a, exactly the size to make this. And I would use these threads and stitch over one and I probably wouldn't run out at that rate for this little sampler. And I think I'm gonna start it. I know, Emily, you are out of your mind, out of your mind. Where did you leave your brain? Um, I know. But I think I might. Now, I'm not going to start it before I go to England. So once I get back from England, a different type of insanity might come over me. Because I will, you know, I will have seen things in England, bought things, been given things as part of our retreat that I might choose to start instead of that. But who knows? Well, who does know? That's really, that's the truth. So now I'm gonna turn my talk to getting ready for England. So in case any of you are new viewers or haven't watched it a while, first of all, welcome or welcome back. Um, I am going on next week to London with my friend, we're flying to London uh, with my friend Leslie and we are going to the Great British Sampler Weekend which is being held in Swindon 
UK, which is west of London. As part of that, we're going to Whitney Antiques, which specializes in antique samplers, and that I think I'll be very easily able to resist buying an antique sampler. I mean, that is not, I don't have any desire to buy that, to buy one, but I'm very interested in seeing them and whatever else Whitney Antiques has displayed. And we will be participating in the Sampler Weekend, which is the Sampler, um, Great British Sampler Weekend, which is gonna have a lot of interesting and fun things going on, including some projects that we will be given. Um, and then it closes with a visit on Monday to the George Mueller Museum in Bristol, which is some distance from Swindon. And Monday, October 2nd, which I know that all of you follow uh, British Rail news avidly. Um, and therefore you all know that there's going to be a rail strike, a train strike on October 2nd. So we weren't really planning to take the train anyway, probably, although we, can, we could. Um, it's possible to take a train from Swindon to Bristol. But it means that we and the entire country are going to be making more use of buses and taxis and Ubers. So I think Leslie and I have a little bit of concern about whether we'll be able to get to Bristol and then get from Bristol to Stowe on the Wold, which is where we're spending the night, two nights. And after our trip, after the trip, the video I make when we get back, I'll tell you more about what we see and I'll show pictures and things like that. But there is this, con this underlying concern about transportation. Once we reach Stowe on the Wold, I think we're gonna be fine because we have plans made. But in any case, um, that's what we're doing next week. Leaving on Wednesday and uh, returning on the 7th. And my husband is not going, her husband is not going. It's just us girls. So it's, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a little bit shocking that in th I have three sleeps here and then Leslie is here for the last sleep. And then we will sleep, so to speak, on the airplane. And then we'll be there. This trip has been 15 months in the planning but it's gonna be great. So really, I'm gonna to talk to you about my preparations. Mostly I'm gonna to talk to you about my preparations for the trip in this variety show section. So one of the things that, um, if you were watching my videos a year ago-ish, you'll know that as soon as the registrations were complete for the sampler weekend, the registrants were provided with a chart called Eliza Stringer, age six. And the idea of this was that we were, that we were not given a thread legend, that we had the chart and we were supposed to choose our own colors and put ourselves in the position of the six-year-old girl, Eliza Stringer, who was either offered a selection of colors and she chose something or her governess or school mistress or mother said, here is, this color and here's some fabric. I want you to stitch this. So we don't know, we as participants don't know how that came about, but we were given the chart. And so I'm taking this, we're supposed to take it, complete it and show it so that we can see what everybody chose to do. And some of these pictures have shown up in the, pictures of these have shown up in the Great British Sampler weekend. But anyway, I chose uh, this is 46 count latte, and I used four different shades of 103 silks. Um, red as the primary one, and then green, pink, and tan. And to sign the, my work, I put my initials EHW in tan up in that alphabet up there. So that's what I did. I may, I mean, it isn't fra framed or anything, obviously, and I may still put the year or something. I may even put my, my name over one or something um, tucked in somewhere underneath it or whatever. 
what am I gonna do with this after the fact? I'll probably, this I would probably frame myself. I would pin it and then lace it and then get a frame made for it because I have a feeling that I'm going to end up with samplers that I want to put on the wall somewhere. Which wall? I don't know. It remains to be seen. But that, now here's the funny thing, I couldn't find this. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. I had to go searching and then when I found it, it was all wrinkled. And so I d dabbed it with water and it's still damp. And I laid it over my Ot light, which gets a little bit warm to dry it out a little bit before I started the video. Crazy. So another thing that's happening in the sampler week in this um, sampler cross stitch thing is a show and tell opportunity. And, you know, I was thinking, I don't, I would like to take something to show that is unique to me. And I probably would not want to take some, some of my older, I don't want to take anything framed because I don't want to fuss with frame and glass in my suitcase. In fact, a suitcase is a whole nother level of challenge. So how I'm gonna manage that but that's not what we're talking about right now. So I decided I would bring my Talavera. Now this was the Fox and Rabbit free um, mystery stitch along for 2021. And the, pad, the chart was provided as a monochrome chart and we were invited to choose our own colors. And so that's what I did. And it's based on the Talavera tiles of Mexico. And I chose colors that are reminiscent of that. And I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. Originally, I didn't know what I was gonna do with this. I might frame this also, you know, having located it in my stack of finished projects, it's quite dramatic. And maybe I'll frame it. But I, anyway, I chose my own colors for it. So that is pretty uniquely me. And I signed it down here in the very bottom of this um, 2021 EW stitched over one. And it's fine. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to take. I am. So that I think is, yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna take. Now, what, what else am I gonna take? Well, this I made, um, this is a pl plate, maybe you'd call it. It's made of, you know, rope that I stitched on my sewing machine. Oh, there's thread stuck, stuck to it, surprise. Um, and I, it has a little bit of a lip to it. And I wanted to have something that had a little bit of a lip because, and that was flexible, could be packed in a suitcase so that a spool of thread wouldn't roll off it or, you know, any thing would stay put. Uh, so I could set it on the table. So I'm going to take that. Um, if I, I haven't decided which, what stitching I'm taking to just work on but it might be Matilda, which I'm using 103, which comes on a spool. I'm only using the blue now. That's another reason is that it's just one color. So, but if I put the spool of thread on here, it won't roll off. That's something I'm taking. Um, I'm taking a hoop, I'm taking thread, I'm taking scissors, probably these tiny little scissors. These little red scissors have tiny blade. I hope that they won't get confiscated. I made a little case for it. It's kind of messy looking, but it's made out of practice quilting stuff. I may, I may change the stitching on it, but they, they fit right in here because they're very sharp. And I wasn't even sure of where I wanted to put them. Um, so that's what I did. So they fit in this little case. Um, I don't think I'm taking, I'll take a needle minder with me, I suppose. Hmm. Yes, I probably will. And I'll take needles and 
That's all. Oh, my light. That's essential. In its case, which is big. So it'll have to be stuffed with things. Um, and I'm taking little table gifts that I've made. And of course, the small, for the small the exchange that I showed a few videos ago, the little Blackbird Designs pillow thing I made. And clothes and a raincoat. One of the things that I'm looking forward to is that we're going to be meet in London. We're going to be meeting Mark Goodliffe, who is one of the guys on the Cracking the Cryptic channel. And so we're, we're meeting him one evening, which, of course, we've never met in person. And I've seen Mark many times because I watch his videos and I've sent him a couple of pictures of myself just because of random reasons. So he doesn't have some idea what I look like and maybe he watch, maybe he's watched one of my videos. I doubt, I highly doubt it because he doesn't have time and he's not interested in cross stitch. But we're gonna have a chance to meet him. That'll be interesting. He does a daily Wordle um, YouTube short, by the way. Any of you who do Wordle, which is probably most of you because the world does Wordle, might be interested in trying to catch that. It's Cracking the Cryptic is the YouTube channel. And it's a daily short video where he does Wordle in one minute or less. And he's very good at it. And he's quite entertaining sometimes. Um, so anyway, that's, we have tours and such. So onto a little bit different topic, still related to cross stitch and still related to the temporary, the pot potential insanity that is coming over me. First of all, the, I, I didn't bring it down to show you because it's a cardboard box, but the box that the, um, holiday countdown stitch along from uh, Mountain Folk Embroidery and Evertote, that box has arrived. It came last week or earlier this week or sometime. And that is, you know, don't open till December 1st. Well, this is September, people. I opened the box. I didn't open any of the envelopes. And I didn't even open the package that has the fabric in it. Is that true? Yes, that's true. I couldn't remember if that was a sealed, uh, opaque, or if it was clear. I think it's opaque, so I don't know the. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it'll be fun. Um, the idea is we have we open one envelope every day from December first to December twenty fifth, and in there there will be a portion of the pattern and a new floss color. So 25 skeins of floss of Roxy Floss Co. Floss that are specially dyed for this project. Fabric uh, dyed by them especially for this project and this pattern especially for this project. So that's what December will have. Yeah, but that's a long way off. You'll hear me talk about that again. When I was rooting around looking for Eliza Stringer, I re remembered that I had bought this pattern. This is Satsuma, Satsuma Street design. Um, I really like it. It's bright colors. It's big blocks of color, probably a very quick stitch. So I might possibly do that. In fact, hmm, same colors basically as my Talavera. So that, that's interesting. I might do that. I might start that this fall. I don't know why, because I'm insane. So another thing I came across when I was rooting around is these square hoops or rectangular hoops by Nurge. And I got them as you may, if you've watched my videos, you know I got them maybe six months ago and I tried them. Um, this one has so much potential. In fact, they all do. I would say they have potential. There's a lot of great design. Wow, it's windy out there. There's a lot of great design elements to them. I like how this screw is not parallel, but it comes up like this, so you could get a grip of it. Um, 
once you get the fabric in there, it really does hold it very firmly. However, um, I'll take this one apart because it's handy because it's what's in my hand. Um, so you unscrew it just like a hoop, you know, a normal hoop. You can unscrew it quite a bit. See, you have to unscrew it quite a bit actually. So as you see here, there's a, there's a channel in this piece and there's a ridge in this piece. And the ridge fits in the channel and that's how the fabric is held so well. But it's hard on the fabric and it's hard to change the position of the fabric, to change the tautness once you have this outer piece on it. And I decided I don't like it. I think it's, it's hard. It's, if you get it perfect when you first put it on there, it's great. But if it isn't perfect, then it's hard to adjust. And I've decided that I want to get rid of these. Now I was gonna put them in the thrift shop bag because what a find it would be for somebody at the thrift shop who was looking for these. And for sure, I'm gonna get rid of these two larger ones. This one actually is potentially useful to me, so I might hold on to that one. But these two larger ones, they are the 200 millimeter, the number three and number four size, 200, 220 millimeter and 280 millimeter by Nerge. Um, there's a lot of great, a lot of things to recommend about these. But I thought I would see if anybody of you wants them first. Um, so I suppose if more than one of you wants them, I'll have to randomly choose. Or if you only want the blue one or you only want the pink one, then that would be fun. That would be great <laughs> if, that, if it worked out that way. I think I'll keep the purple one. I probably will keep the purple one, but I'll... I'll give those away. And if nobody wants them, that's fine. I'll give them to the thrift shop and some local person will have a, a heyday in the, in the thrift shop. So I did have just a couple more things. One is I made a project bag recently. So I made a quilt for my friend Anne. And the, I had, in the course of making that, I had made some blocks that were sort of test blocks of various fabric combinations or different fabrics. And I had made, you know, if I was gonna make flying geese, I made more than I thought I would need in case I was wrong. And so I had extra flying geese pieces left over and extra flying geese here. And so anyway, I made this project bag out of those extra pieces. And that was very fun. It's this envelope style which is much easier to work with if the fabric is already, I don't know, I just felt like this was easier to work with. And I had I happened to, I thought I had a snap. Turns out I didn't, I had to go buy one. I mean, I didn't have the type I wanted, but I like the envelope style uh, project bag. It wouldn't work as well if you had a lot of miscellaneous parts because it, like lots of different, thread spools or something, or I don't know what else you would have lots of in a project. Because it isn't sealed, it doesn't absolutely close, it just folds over. But I think it's fine for, for my purposes. And then the other thing I thought I would show, just because when I was, again, when I was rooting around looking for Eliza Stringer, um, I, our church has a relationship with an organization in Kenya, in Nairobi, called Oh, Beacon of Hope, and that is a ministry. It's a school and a workshop that was founded 20 years ago, and our church was uh, instrumental in helping to found it, to in um, giving skills to women who were themselves affected by AIDS, affected or infected, or whose family was affected. And it largely serves one of the large slums in, in Nairobi. 
and there it has a school i mean over the years it's grown it has a school it has a workshop where women learn weaving and other skills and uh there's a business there's a you know they are able to sell their products the children get an education and there are several churches involved with it from around the u.s and also in kenya in nairobi and anyway we sent a mission team there this summer a medical mission team who does clinics and dental clinics and that kind of thing for the students at the school as well as other um places and one of the organizers of that team always buys earrings and keychains and things at different bazaars in Kenya and brings them home to sell at a markup to raise money for the either the mission team or the school itself, um, Beacon of Hope. So I bought some things. I do not wear jewelry, you may have noticed, and I don't have a keychain of this sort, but these things are just kind of amazing. So the, these are earrings. I mean, I should really take up earrings and, and wear these, don't you think? But I, what I thought is they would make fun zipper poles for project bags. And here's a keychain, hand painted. Um, here's another one, the beading on that. Here's uh, Africa with the beading, really nice. Again, this could be a zipper pole probably is what I would imagine. Here's a set of earrings. Again, I should really, <laughs> I should wear these. The, the workmanship is just beautiful. Um, I'm not sure what I would do with these. If These are a little fragile for a zipper pull maybe, but maybe as a, um, a scissors thing, fob. And I mean, I feel as if I could easily take the earring part off or rebend the the hook of the earring into some other purpose. And then I thought these were really cute. These are um, these are earrings. Again, I just can't picture wearing them, but can you see that little elephant? I have two of them because they're earrings. They have a little stone in them of some sort. Anyway, just cute, cute stuff. So we also over the years have bought some rugs that were made by the people there at Beacon of Hope. A again, as a way to help them with their income needs. One year, the big Christmas present to all of the family was rugs. Um, it happened that a big shipment was being brought over it's hard for them to ship it in the normal way because the rugs are heavy and large, you know, the volume is large. And so anytime a mission team went over there, they would take empty big luggage carriers and bring them back as checked luggage. Um, and it happened that year, we had a big enough team and enough capacity to bring back rugs that there was quite a selection available. So we bought 10 or so of the rugs to give to our family. And when we visited some of our family, we still see them in use, so that's nice. And we have some, some here too. Anyway, so that's a really wacky group. Oh, one more story, one more story. You know, Nicola Parkman, Hands Across the Sea, has put out another box. It was on pre-order. I think the, the, um, it opened for purchasing. I don't remember. Two weeks ago, maybe. And she, her capacity must be greater because it didn't sell out immediately. But I had decided I wasn't gonna buy it. Because you know, I, I even talked about it on this in my video that whatever day was the day before it was being released, probably two two weeks ago, because I, I don't need it, I don't. And then Saturday, I did not tune in at 7 a.m., which is when the pre-orders opened, because I thought, you know, it is fine, I don't need it. I don't, I don't need to have it. 
So I did tune in around noon and I bought it <laughs> because there was still some left. Um, I doubt there are any left now, but maybe there are. So that is being shipped. So um, the Great British Sampler Weekend, of course, is Nicola Parkman's event also. So she posted in the Facebook group, those of you who pre-ordered the box, would you like to me to bring it to you at the retreat? And most people said yes, and I said no. And the rule is gonna be that people may not open the box in Swindon. They have to wait until they've left the town so that we are not spoiled, those of us. You know, our experience of opening the box as a surprise isn't spoiled because, you know, 50 or 100 of our friends will have received their box. So I'm not going to because I'm already worried about luggage space. I'm just, I can't add another box to the things I have to haul around. So I'm not doing that. I'm not receiving mine there. And I hope that everybody obeys and doesn't say anything about what's in it. Because folks will not, I mean, very understandably, folks will want to open it. Of course they will. I'm content to wait until mine gets shipped in mid-November or the end of November and have it be something that I open in December or whenever it arrives. Will I wait until Christmas? Probably not. That I probably won't do. I will open it when it comes. But, and I'll tell you about it. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was just a, another, another moment of insanity. Insanity. I'm crazy. Yeah. Okay. I have talked way longer than usual. I will not be making a video for the next two Fridays. I will possibly shoot a little video footage at the weekend, various things that we do. I just doubt that I'm gonna have the ability to upload the capacity broadband or whatever to upload anything. So probably, even if I do make videos, I will not actually post them until after my return, which is Saturday the 7th. So probably the next video would be whatever the Friday is after that, the 15th or 13th or something um, of October. And you can count on hearing about the retreat that and the week and our trip. That is what we'll be I'll be talking about. And it will probably be a longer than 35 minute video. So set aside some time. Um, and that's assuming we have a good time. If we don't have a good time, I won't say anything about it to speak of. I'll just say, yep, I went to England and I'm home now. Okay, that's enough. Thanks so much for watching. Um, tell your friends. What a silly thing. <laughs> I don't have any local friends who cross-stitch, so I can't tell my friends. You all are my friends. And I'm telling you that I appreciate you watching and um, I love your comments. And I guess that I'll see you in three weeks. Many blessings to you, friends. <laughs>